Good afternoon, like the space countdown. We, we, we good now, Michelle? We're good. We're good? Sorry, I, I had it on mute. I still can't get used to this thing. Okay. I'll call to order the virtual meeting of the Budget Advisory Committee on Thursday, June 4th, 2020, 2 p.m. Roll call, please. Uh, Chair Banther? Here. Vice Chair Hales? Here. Mr. Doddridge? I saw him on here. He said he was coming. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kudos? They were here earlier. I saw them. Here. Sorry, I apologize. Okay. That's okay. There he is. Mr. McCloy? Here. Ms. Hall? Here. Uh, and Mr. Bergman? Here. Is Mr. Doddridge on yet? He is connected in. I'm asking him to start his video. Okay. Thank right, you. Uh, per usual, if we go past 3 30, I'll pass the virtual gavel to, uh, to Ms. Hales. Okay. So uh, first thing, we're going to be doing the uh, fiscal year 2021 department presentations. The first one is procurement, Mr. 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 Jackus. Hi, uh, Jay Jackus. Um, basically, our budget is the same as last year, uh, except you'll notice on point 52, there's been an increase 
Uh, that's due to the fact that our fixed asset limits have been raised to $10,000 and computers are being bought uh, under that 52 line item, where in the past it would have shown up on point 64. Uh, but other than that, I'm open to any questions. All right. Uh, um, um, any, any, anybody have any questions? Speak up. Look good with you, mister. That might have been the quickest one ever, if that's no questions. All right, thanks. I think you're good, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, second one is is uh, project administration, uh, Mr. Mr. Robertson. Thank you, Mr. Banther. This is Bob Robertson, project administration department director. And I just have about five quick slides that I'm gonna share with everyone on my screen. Go through a very, very quick presentation and then be ready for questions. So I'm going to be sharing here PowerPoint presentation. Can I confirm that um, everyone has seen that? Yep. Yep. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. So uh, very briefly, uh, the project administration department budget for fiscal 2021. Um, if you're not familiar with my department, uh, I'll summarize it very briefly. We are an internal service department. We provide project support also departments, um, engineering type support where we, we uh, help with the design phase, overseeing construction phase, either phase or both phases we can do. Um, we also manage and serve as the city point of contact for our engineer of record contracts, um, Cardinal and American consulting professionals. We also are the con point of contact for our utilities engineer of record contracts. Also, um, continuing services contracts with a hydrogeologist, geotechnical firm, and a surveyor. So we, we provide that kind of single point of contact services, as I said. The, pro the project administration department is organized as such. There's, uh, it's, it's one of the huge departments with three whole people in it. Uh, myself as the director, project supervisor, Nick Macris and a field guide, Jevin Miller, he's my project inspector. And we also have Ashley Tobin, who is public services project executive assistant. She's double duty assisting my department and the public services department. Project administration is paid for and is funded by three different accounts, three different sources, 52% uh, from water and sewer, 19% from stormwater, and 29% from general fund. They're not arbitrary numbers. These are based on the ratio of the work that we do and the projects that we support. Uh, I did recently did the, the most recent analysis last year. And then finally to my budget this year, this year's budget is 431,000 uh, and change. Last year's budget was 432,000 and change. So really no, no uh, adjustment in last year and this year. My budget is almost entirely for salaries and benefits supporting the staff that support those projects. The remaining 17% of our budget or my budget covers operating expenses. So that is the summary of, of, my, of my department budget. And I will cancel the screen share for questions. Thank you, Bob. Uh, excellent as always. Uh, any questions, anybody? No. No, question. no questions? Okay, Bob, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome and thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, next up is public service, Mr. Mr. Paul Smith. Hi, good afternoon, Paul Smith here, and um, thank you for the opportunity to present to you today. I'm going to also do a screen share. Uh, the public services department has 15 budgets, and um, I've tried to summarize for you some of the highlights so that uh, we can get through this efficiently. So let me try to do that now. And hopefully everybody can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Very good. All right. Yeah, I mute my phone here. Okay. So uh, I want to point out something first. A big deal for us in the lower left corner of this presentation slide is the solar project at the RO facility. That's the city's water supply now being partially energized by solar power. So that's been up and running now for about three weeks. 
and we're already starting to get a sense of um, what it can do for us. We're looking forward to more of that in the future. Um, next slide. Our department overall, uh, we've got engineering and administration component. We also have utilities, including water and sewer, the maintenance that goes along with that and environmental compliance. We have the golf course and also recreation and cemetery. I've color coded these boxes to show which ones are enterprise funds, meaning that the user fees pay for the expenses. And then the ones in green are the general fund budgets. As a whole, we have 114 employees in our fiscal year 21 proposed budget. That's about a third of the city with 15 individual budgets that total almost $16 million. And that total includes personnel operating and CIP. These are the budgets in a summary form. I just wanna point out to you, here's that total of 15.9 million. Here's the 15 budgets coming down the left side. A point to note is total of personnel operations and CIP, roughly a third each, roughly. I want to acknowledge the leadership team in utilities is Raymond Page and golf course is Howard Hunt. Recreation is Craig Dolan and the cemetery is Cheryl Stedge. They're all a big part of uh, our department and I want to acknowledge their, their work. Um, starting with recreation, that's on pages 89 to 93 of your budget. Um, this slide gives you a summary of the things that recreation does. I won't list them all, but in summary, it's a variety of programs for all ages and income levels. Um, for the division in 2019, I just wanna give a sense of how much revenue they pay for their own um, services. Uh, I think the budget in 2019 was about 800,000 and the revenue was 279, which comes out to about 35% of expenses. Some of the things we've got in fiscal year 21, um, some of our bigger expenses is the instructors and athletic programs. And I wanna note that these have um, fees that go with them. So 20 to 30% of that comes back to the city um, so of that 55,000 in the budget, you know, roughly 10 to 15,000 comes back for the administrative costs for those programs. Um, also electricity for parks, facilities, and fields. Um, we do have some cost recovery um, by the leagues for a portion of that, and that's budgeted at 77,000 this year. Cycadia Cemetery on pages 102 through 105. Cycadia Cemetery is one of the oldest cemeteries in the area. We've got 30 acres out there. It's named after the cycad tree, which is a sago palm. Um, I want to tell you about an expansion that's ongoing. You've probably noticed it if you've driven along Tarpon Avenue by Jasmine. It's coming along very nicely. It's going to provide almost 800 new in-ground plots as part of it and a future mausoleum site. Here's a picture of the actual expansion in progress. This was taken a few weeks ago. So things are, are really coming along. That's looking east. And uh, there's really a nice grade to the site where it flows downhill from the far corner there towards the where the picture is taken. The perpetual care fund is where our fees for plots and services go to a dedicated fund for cemetery improvements, including that expansion project. Also the fence, the decorative fencing that you see around the site are examples of perpetual care fund expense uh, reimbursements. And finally a slide of then and now, on the left is 2009, what the front of the cemetery looked like and 2016 uh, to the right where you can see some of those improvements that have happened along with the county's upgrade of uh, Tarpon Avenue, Keystone Road. So budget highlights, um, this will be our first budget year coming up where the expansion will be in operation. 
Um, some of our bigger expenses, opening and closing services are um, 50,000. This is reimbursed through fees to customers. This is where they actually opened the grave for the service and um, close the grave after the service. Um, turf improvements, we plan to continue to improve the grounds. Um, we are planning on a hybrid vehicle for the cemetery in this budget. I do note that as a sustainability goal for us. And we've also got replacement mowers planned. Part of that is with that new acreage we have to mow. Moving on to the utilities divisions. The utilities provide for water, sewer, and reclaimed water service. Um, in the water section, we have water supply budget, and I put these in order of the, the path of the water flow. So it starts with the RO facility and the wells that, that produce the water, and then they move through the pipes, which is the water distribution budget, and then finally through the meters to build a customer. So that's the budgets involved in water. On the sewer end, we have sewage collection, which is the pipes that lead from the home in the street there um, to lift stations, which pump the sewage to the wastewater treatment plant. And it uh, should note here that the reclaimed water is part of the wastewater treatment plant budget. Utilities maintenance, I don't wanna forget them. They're the ones that keep everything running properly and repair things when they break. So for those budgets, a few of the key projects we've got in each area for water supply, we have some permanent generators we're planning to install at different well sites. We saw how important that was in Hurricane Irma a few years ago, and this will make us even better prepared for those types of emergencies. I will note that we were able to stay in water providing service throughout that week or so of loss of power. So that's something we continue to prioritize as very important part of a community service, public safety, public health. Um, water distribution, the pipes, we have ongoing water pipe and valve replacements planned. We also have a column called utilities for other projects. And what that is, is we get sometimes things that are brought to us because there's construction going on that our utilities are involved and we have to be able to come up with funding to relocate our utilities, to upgrade them or whatever. So that's a way to plan for the unplanned work. And we also have ongoing hydrants to uh, keep maintained throughout the city. Meter repair and maintenance. We've been on a meter replacement program for many years now. We're doing that in-house a little bit at a time. As we go, we'll replace meters in different sections. And as we do it, we upgrade to the latest technology which includes being able to read the meters from a moving vehicle so that they don't have to get out and open the meter box filled with ants and read a meter manually anymore. Um, on the sewer end of things, uh, we also have um, money budgeted for expanding sewer, fourth main improvements, and also lining and repairing um, the existing sewer lines. Similarly for the pumping portions, those stations require um, rehabilitation upgrades and we have money funded for that. And finally, the wastewater treatment plant, which has been in operation since I believe the 1980s. Uh, so coming up on 40 years old, there's electrical systems, pumping systems that need to be replaced, repaired, upgraded, et cetera. So that's part of that plan. The golf course, um, it's an 18 hole facility, the city operates and um, it is an enterprise fund. It's quite historic. We're actually recognized in Florida for that because it was built in 1907, started in 1907. Um, we have two budgets in the golf course. It's the golf course budget and the food service budget. Some of the expense examples for that we have a maintenance contract and that's to um, apply the, uh, the chemicals to the turf, to mow the turf, to keep the grounds basically maintained, which is a seven day a week job. Uh, and that's a $518,000 annual contract. We have a golf cart lease. That's about $70,000 annually. Um, some of the revenue that we see, some of the bigger areas are the greens fees 
for a little over 600,000. That's the money you pay to play the course. And then there's the cart rental, which is when you take a cart to put your clubs on and drive around. And then the pro shop sales are somewhere around 50 to 60,000. Those are just examples. There's other sources, but those are the big ones. So overall, this is my closing slide of those different areas I presented to you. I wanted to give you sort of a state of the union with things that are going on. Um, recreation is contending with facility and program closures due to the COVID limitations. This is affecting our camps, our indoor programs. Um, but we have saved significant expenses on things like overtime, electricity, supplies, and we are looking at our programs and reevaluating them to meet this changing time that we're in. Cycadia Cemetery has been serving an essential function. The new expansion will help that perpetual care continue to grow for those future um, additions and improvements like the mausoleum that we need to build in the future. Utilities similarly are another essential function. It's something that doesn't go really up or down with economy. It's in fact, we're finding that people are home more now and they need their uh, water and sewer services more than ever. Um, we will continue to make our system improvements and review efficiency where we can become more efficient in what we're doing. And finally at the golf course, uh, we expect revenue to be down to totally over the year due to our 44 day closure that we had, but we've kept our expenses down. We did see a strong March before uh, the closure and we're seeing a strong comeback since May. So we'll be continuing with new promotions to meet these changing market conditions. So that's a summary of that for me. I'd be happy to answer any questions for you. Thank you, Paul. Um, any questions, anybody? I have a question. Go ahead. Um, has there been any discussion about selling the golf the golf course at all? I mean, I, 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 I'm not even saying, suggesting that. I just know it's been a drain for a long time. And I noticed maybe down in Largo or Clearwater recently, there was a city course that, that was sold or in the process of being sold. I can say I've heard of past, um, and I'm talking more than 10 years ago, interests or discussion in that. I can say that the golf course does serve an important community purpose. And uh, as far as recreation goes, the percent of its cost that it covers is, is way, way high. Uh, day to day, the revenue pretty well offsets those daily expenses. It's only when we get into having to make major improvements to buildings and things that the course begins to need help from uh, another fund. So um, I would say financially it's performing, uh, certainly better than many other golf courses. Um, does it pay 100% of its expenses all the time? Well, not when we have to make major improvements, but I think all things considered, we're doing very well. Okay. And I like the course a lot, so thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Anybody else? It's hard with the Zoom thing. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Paul. Number next up, number four is building development. Um, uh, 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 Mr. Kevin Power, you're up next. Kevin, there he is. Good afternoon. I was expecting three o'clock on mine. We're, going, we're going. We're going fast today. I, I, I see that. I see. So uh, looking at our budget uh, this year as compared to last year, we do have a slight increase in our budget. Uh, that increase has been mainly due to uh, uh, additional software that we've uh, put in place during this pandemic. We were able to do occupied residential um, building permits uh, remotely. So we've added that into our, our system now they um, let, let us use it as a trial uh, period. And I think it's worked out really well. And we would like to go ahead and uh, move forward with, with continuing the use of that, uh, that program. Uh, also uh, some additional software uh, for contractors to use for scheduling inspections and um, getting their results instead of having to, to come into the office. 
So that's really where our biggest increase in the building department comes in this budget as compared to last year. I know we were looking at um, a lot of areas to cut. Uh, however, with the pandemic, when it came through, we were one of the very few building departments uh, in this area, if not the state that was still able to uh, do inspections on occupied residential properties where most other jurisdictions pulled away from that and said they were not going to do it. Uh, we did give homeowners the option to wait till after the pandemic or allow us to do it. And the majority of them uh, really uh, liked it. Same with the contractors and the contractors uh, want us to go ahead and continue with the use of that, of that program. Uh, also in that increase was the, um, our, our internet uh, voice recognition, like I was telling you, where contractors can now schedule uh, get results from uh, their phone uh, and not have to to call or email. So it's, everybody seems that we're in a texting society today. Uh, uh, the contractors really like to just send text messages and do that. So that was the biggest change on the building side. Um, if you have any questions on the building, um, open for questions. Okay, Kevin, thank you very much. I want to say you're, you're doing a, a like fantastic job, by the way. I, I'm on the receiving end of, 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 of much of your judgment, as you know, and you're very fair and you help people out. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, any questions, anybody? Questions? No questions? Okay, did you have more, uh, Kevin? Or, 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 or I, I have the tree, tree bank. Okay, go ahead with that then. Thank you. Um, so really the tree bank, obviously, we're... we're pulling from the tree bank on that fund. However, we acquired that position full-time in our department last year. We brought the arborist into our department. Uh, and with that arborist, a vehicle did not come with her. So we've put in our budget for a vehicle uh, for that position, which is going to be what we budgeted for is an electric vehicle, fully electric. Um, to kind of, I feel, complement what the arborist does out there and not have a, a standard combustion engine vehicle out there. So that's kind of the uh, biggest change that we have on the, uh, uh, the, 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 the tree side of it. Um, other than that, it's just a lot of budgeting from the tree bank for future projects within the city. Uh, Kevin, obviously we, we would leave the, um, the type of vehicle to you, but you know, my assumption would be she would need more, more, more of a truck, or is where she goes not really any kind of a four by four or like off road experience? Not really, um, since we're primarily a you know a paved road uh, city. Mm -hmm. uh, I just feel the overall uh, look and feel of what the arborist is, and and us trying to move forward with sustainability, that we really want to start looking at that and move with the electric vehicles. We have the charging stations here on site and uh, you know, looking at the particular vehicle, it, it has a, a really good range of over 250 or over 260 miles on a charge. Uh, so that's really kind of why we wanted to, to stick with that um, uh, with an electric vehicle for her. Oh, okay, great. Um, any questions, anybody? I guess I, uh, can I ask a quick question? Sure. In regards to line uh, 55 with uh, the training, do you expect more training in uh, the next the next fiscal year uh, comparably to 2018 and 2019? Would we increase that? Yeah. That's yeah, that's the training. Um, yeah, we have... Um, Shannon sending her off to uh, various uh, uh, training courses to go with her job. Um, some of the requirements uh, are, are additional licensing uh, as an arborist and also as a uh, floodplain manager, uh, since she does deal with a lot of our stormwater and, and those type of issues. So yeah, we are trying to get more training for her and push those out there. Again, that does come out of the tree bank. Thank you. Any, anybody else? Okay, thank, thank you, Kevin. Well, appreciate thank it. Thank you.
Uh, next up is information technology, uh, Suzanne. Hi everyone. This is Suzanne Linton. I'm your information technology director. I have three departments under me, um, theater, GIS, and IT. So we are going to start with theater today. And just a little overview of what they do. They maintain all media and performances, including broadcasting, television production, city meetings, and this platform, Zoom, um, with virtual hosting. So even though they haven't been doing any performances in the Performing Arts Center, um, they have been exceedingly busy with our virtual meetings. Um, so their budget um, this year, they haven't spent a lot because we haven't had a lot. And so next year, as you can see on the budget, we did cut a lot. And um, the only thing that we really do need that um, media video server to support TV and broadcasting. Um, and that's about it. Does anybody have any questions on theater? I have no questions. Anybody on theater? No questions. Thank you, Suzanne. You have more, obviously, I assume. Excellent. Yes. Um, I'm going to move on to GIS. Um, for any of you that don't know what GIS is, it is a system for capturing, storing, checking, and displaying data relative to the Earth's surface. So um, that includes all types of utilities in the, in the city, pipes and pumps and meters, all of that. Um, so this year, we have actually moved our professional services. We had um, the money and improvement in um, 63 last year, and we moved it up to professional services. Um, there are only two employees in this division, and um, as you can imagine, they're very busy, and they would like to scan and digitize all as-builts that are in storage for public use, create a compliant tracking system, and do 3D visualization of all utilities. Um, so they will need some professional services um, to assist them in helping, and that is what the 80,000 is for. Anybody have any questions on GIS? Any questions, anybody? Don't think so. Uh, go on, you're good. All right, we will move on to information technology. Um, Information technology, uh, we do have a strategic plan and I'll tell you a little bit about um, what we base our decisions upon. Um, expanding capability of web-based technology, a hybrid cloud services and computing that includes 365 and our cloud-based financial system, mobility, remote connectivity and efficiency. And um, that did serve us very well during this pandemic because we were ready when needed to go um, remote with all of our workers. And it really did go seamlessly and without a hitch. Um, the, um, obviously we haven't, everything um, came to a halt when we had to go to this virtual world. Um, so we still have a lot of projects this year that we have not completed, including um, our voice over IP upgrade that I plan to have done before this budget year is over with. It is seven years old and it does, um, it does do the phones for the entire city. So we definitely need to do that. Um, what I've asked for this year is um, I would like to replace all of the switches that run the voice over IP once I'm finished with this voice over IP project. And we are also going to replace all of the firewalls they are five years old and um, security is exceedingly important to us. Um, and that's about it. Anybody have any questions in IT? Yeah, uh, in regards to the Microsoft 365, it, yeah. is that purchased or uh, just a yearly fee? It's an annual fee. An annual fee. Yes. 
Uh, I have a question on the um, interdepartmental allocation. It seems to be doubling in the 21 budget. What's going on with that? Um, that is the library. And um, Ron Herring actually calculates the interdepartmental allocation. So maybe he can pipe in and tell me how he calculated that. Your volume, Ron, or your mute button. Sorry about that. Yeah, we went back and did the allocation. We find out the you know IT is taking care of more computers in the past. Sometimes in the past, it was a, the county used to help out with them. So we take the allocation about the number of computers divided by the total number of computers in the city, and it did come out to be more this year because IT is re, is maintaining more computers at the library. So yes, it did increase. You know about as as Miss Hales was saying, about doubled this year. Right. And you'd be surprised to know we have 70 computers at our library. What? Well, any more questions? Okay. Do you have anything else, uh, Suzanne, or, or is that all? Oh, that's it. Okay. Thank you very much, as always. Do a great job. Thank you so much. Okay, next up is our favorite mainstay, finance, Miss, Mr. Herring. You know, I didn't think we'd get to us today. I'm usually the last one on the list here and stuff. I'm just sort of a fallback person here and stuff, but uh, you guys are going through them pretty quick here and stuff. Probably maybe we could have arranged all the departments today and got it done with. <laughs> Not about that, Ron. <laughs> they do such a good job though, the departments do, I, I tell you though. It, you know, and I just uh, have, you know, to go, you know, I, I'm over the finance department, utility building, and the meter reader departments are under me. You know, and the finance department starts on page 16. You know, I'm happy to say for the last three years, we have been fully staffed. We had some retirements about four or five years ago, so we went through some transition. So we've, you know, so we've been fully staffed for the last uh, three years now. Um, excellent staff. We have nine staff members that the average uh, about 12 years of service, if you average out the uh, nine employees. And they go from being there for three years to 34 years. And I won't tell you who the one that's been there 34 years is, but, <laughs> mm. but um, you know, and if I could say a little bit about those employees, you know, I can't say enough about the staff of the finance department. We're very proud of them. You know, they go over and above what is asked of them. You know, the citizens of Tarpon Springs can rest assured that their money is being protected. I, I always say they, they keep the city financially safe. They have great pride in their work and they're always looking out for the citizens' money and how it is spent. You know, when they come to me with questions, I always think of them as a bunch of well, financial detectives when they come in and stuff. So, so no matter how small the question is, I've learned that, you know, small problems, if you don't address it, could be a bigger problem later. So. I just want to give some kudos to the staff. You know, I'm very proud of them and all they do in, the, in our department there. Um, we try to keep up, you know, with the cross training of all the staff. You know, with every function of its payroll accounts payable, there's two other staff member, members that can fall in to uh, perform that function. As just to go into some challenges, accomplishments of the past year, we had our annual audit, which is required every year. We had no audit comments. A lot of that's attributed to the staff and the great work they do. We've had two internal audits by our internal audit and contract firm. Uh, they did a follow-up audit and a P-card audit, and we had minimal, minimal comments on that. Just some things that how we could do some things better was about all they said. Um, hurricane reimbursements, you know, you even believe Hurricane Irma, you know, I, geez, I, two years ago or three years ago, and we finally got the final bits of that money. and I. I can't say enough for Michelle Mims, our assistant finance director, for you know being as detailed she has. I think she's gotten us back maybe 98% of that money of the Hurricane Irma between the and the emergency preparedness. So she's done a great job. Um, another thing that's been tested out this year, which you know even still, you know, finance operated remotely and it's worked very good. So that's. Not that we wanted to do it, but it's been good. I don't want to say a test the last couple of months because our department has been working remotely the last couple of months here. You know, thanks to IT and everything they do and getting us all set up. Um, 
uh, you know, something else we, we had the small business endurance grant, you know, that we had 155 checks issued within two weeks from applications mm -hmm. to visit checks out the door. And we even delivered them to the post office ourselves and stuff. But, um, so we're very proud of our finance department. You know, the department has, um, we try to keep, you know, try to watch our paper use and whatever possible we have, we save documents as PDFs instead of trying to print them on paper. And that's about all about the finance department. As, as far as the budget, of course, travel point 40 and point 55 are down because we haven't been able to travel or go to our conferences. Um, I looked at, if you look at point 49, we've got $1,500 budget, but nothing spent yet. Well, that's because that's the budget ad and the budget ad isn't paid for until the budget's done and the budget's done in September. And our point 51 and 52, you know, we try to limit our, our office of operating supplies. We usually buy them at the end of the year. And um, so we haven't bought our supplies yet, but we will be pretty soon. Um, you know, if anybody asks me if there's a need for the finance department, sometimes, you know, it's not a, it's not, I don't think necessary, but it might, you know, you know, if we had another accountant or, or analyst position, the finance department's had the same amount of positions for years now, but, you know, the demand has increased dramatically. With more services provided by the city, these services require staff to provide citizens and the city employees the related, the related financial functions for these services. So, you know, work, I'm, if we got another position, not that I'm looking for one, but, you know, it would be a work with utilities. I believe there's a need with the size of the water, sewer, sanitation, stormwater for a position to oversee all these financial functions that are utility, utility related. And when I started here, I was utility accounts. So maybe in some of that work is still, I'm still addressing it because I grew it. That's how I started here with this, with the city was in utilities and stuff. Uh, that's all I got on the finance department. And if you got any questions on finance, if not, I'll go into utility billing. Okay. Any 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 any, any questions for finance? Okay, no questions, Ron. Go on. Okay, another great job in finance. There you go. <laughs> utility billing department starts on page 230. The department has three, three employees. One position is vacant, and we're in the process of filling that one. We have a new manager down there who's done a great job. She is very good with customer service and, and she really truly enjoys working and helping the customers. Um, our, new, and our new manager has done some things on her own, which have been great. Um, she, just, she started a new, so where new services could be established via, via email. And she did this before the pandemics, but it helped out really great during the pandemic because customers didn't have to come into the office. They could get, they could set up their new accounts online and through email. We put services being scanned in and digitally stored, reducing the amount of storage and paper use. We've taken billing reports that are, that are being reviewed, you know, instead of printing off the paper, they're doing them as PDFs. And so she said she's saving about 6,000 pages of uh, paper a month being printed. Other billing reports are also being reviewed for accuracy by doing them on PDF instead of printing them off. And, and with that, I the budget is basically pretty, you know, the, the travel and the travel and the point fifty five training. Of course, they haven't been able to do that because of the pandemic. But everything else looks to be on budget for that department. So if you got any questions on utility building, I can go over that or just get into the meter reader department. Any questions on the billing? Okay, Ron, go on. Okay, the meter reader department starts on page 234. There's four employees. Uh, one's vacant, but we're in the process of filling that one also. And, you know, they do a great job down there. I've got one person who's been down there, I think, about 13 years now, but they do a great job. Um, I have not too much else to say about the department, but I know in their budget, again, 0. 0.40 and 0. 0.55, no, no expenditures due to the pandemic. Point 46 repairs and maintenance have increased because we found out our Neptune software, which handles the uh, reading of the meters, is increasing. So we had to increase that budget to $4,000. So that was the increase there, if you see that. But everything else looks to be on budget. And with that, I'm, I'm done with the uh, meter readers at my department. So if you've got any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank you, Ron. Any questions at all? No questions. Okay, Ron, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Unless you have more, I assume you're done. <laughs> you good? Okay, done. thanks. All right. Can I have a general question. I apologize. Sure. My, sure. Uh, yeah. I, uh, in regards to overtime, with all the departments, how what is the policy of the city in regards to overtime, and how does that work in regards to the budget? Like, I understand how it works, but what's the policy? I should ask. But the, the departments put in what they're going to request for their for their overtime or the needs that they expect for those departments, and then they're out, the budget is allocated across the departments in the personnel report. How is that like? Uh, is that limited? Is that how is that? Uh, like, what's the policy on it in regards to need? Because I see there's a lot of uh, overtime within the various departments. Like in the budget book. Well, they have to, you know, they have to budget for the, what they project for their overtime, and then it's just based on we do look at it to see if they are budgeting too much and comparing the actuals to the overtime. Okay. You know, if you're budgeting too much, we're going to cut it back. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Any questions? Anything? Okay. I guess that concludes the presentations. So we'll go to public comments. Uh, IT, do we have anybody waiting to speak uh, online? We have no raised hands at this time. Okay, very good. We'll go on to staff comments, uh, city manager. No, no, no nothing. Um, again, we're plugging along, trying to anticipate what's going on. Um, I imagine after you see most of the rest of the next time we'll we'll be able to have a talk about our strategies obviously one thing that's not in this budget pay increases um hopefully as we move along the budget process and find out what the rates are for the insurance increases and some of the other things uh, hopefully we'll have money available for that but um, again we'll have some things discussed after the rest of the departments i'll make their presentation and then ron and i will talk to you about some of the the challenges that remain uh, before this budget goes through the rest of the process and gets finalized and uh, and uh, put it out for you to assist us on uh, as we go forward. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chief, any questions, comments, or anything? Uh, no comments, thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, Madam, Madam Deputy Clerk. Uh, I just have one comment. We're gonna have a conflict, uh, I believe June 11th, is that correct, Sin Manager? Yes next meeting um so we can either eat meet before the 11th the 9th or the 10th if that works for anybody or everybody i'm pretty open there's, so there's a code enforcement meeting on the 11th so we won't able unable staff to you know coordinate two meetings at the same time okay so. so you're asking, would you prefer, is it easier that we meet earlier in that day or do you want to move it to Wednesday, you said? Well, not early. Oh, I don't know about earlier, city manager. That's going to be your call or Suzanne, when, I don't know if she's still on. Wednesday would be the preferable. Okay. Be the preferable meeting. I'm, I'm fine with Wednesday if that works for everybody else. I mean, that's, 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 that's okay, fine with me. I'm fine. Works for me. Don, is that good for you? You were you were cut off. Yes, I'm fine with that. Okay, okay. we're all good for Wednesday instead of Thursday next week. Okay, very good. I'm Thank personally you, honored. I, I will not be there, Mr. Chairman. We will miss you, Ryan. Sorry about that. Thank you, though. Is that going to be at two o'clock the meeting? As yes, far as I know. Yep, it's the same thing just a day earlier. Okay. All right, great. And IT too. Everybody's good. Okay. Yep. Good. Um, anything else, Michelle? That's it. You're good. Okay. Uh, board comments. Anybody have any comments? No comments. We already discussed next meeting. Any agenda items anybody has besides obviously we're going to go through more departments? Well, Chairman, I just want to bring up something else. And it's sure. something I forgot to mention last week that, and Jay brought it up when he was talking about his computers. We, mm -hmm. The capitalization threshold was raised to $5,000 per the state. 
Mm -hmm. so if you're seeing some people's 0.52 increased uh, like Jay's did for $5,000, it's, it's like he said, stuff that was in 0.64 for capital is now falling under 0.52 operating supplies. So, I forgot to mention that last week, but brought it up now, I guess. Thank you, Ron. In, in regards to uh, the liability policy, how does that work in regards to uh, to the budget and what to expect? Do you just do a, a certain percent increase across the board? When do you get the renewals and are those, are those uh, shopped or how does that work? Is that just something with, uh, what is it, the League of Cities? If you're talking the property liability insurance, mm -hmm. yes, that is- General through, liability. Yes, that is through the League of Cities. Um, I don't think it's been shopped out in a while to tell you the truth. Uh, we usually, what I take is the premiums for the, look at the history, the premium for the current year and I've it estimated, I've estimated a 10% increase. I think if it's like last year, we didn't find out until August last year when we got the final premium, what the total was. And how, how do you find that uh, in, like, what is it? When's the last time you think that was uh, shopped? I'm not sure, but I can find out from the HR director and get that back to you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, a lot of that will be in her presentation next week because she'll okay. be one of the department heads on Wednesday. So, okay. so she'll be able to answer those questions yeah. then. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, let, me, let me just hit one up about my pet project, uh, uh, about the uh, HR related insurance. Did I hear last week, we, we haven't gone out yet, but we'll be going out soon to get competitive bids? Yes, you are correct. The, the package is in the process and it's about to go out. Um, do you know offhand how many people it's going to, how many companies? Just curious. Oh, I'm not sure. I could try to find out for you. Okay, for next time. Uh, I'm assuming that this is a big chunk of business for somebody out there. I'm just very optimistic about what we're going to see. Well, I figured you know, they'll send it out for bid, and maybe we don't know exactly who's going to respond to the to the bid. So we'll but we'll see when we find when we get it out on the street. Okay, but uh, the goal is the goal is to keep for the employees the same benefits. Is that? A goal. In other words, for the employees, they're not for the people covered. They're not going to see a difference in coverage. I think that would be the goal, but I think we'd have to look at the packages and how they come in and how the rates are coming in. At. Okay, because some of that depends on how it goes out to the people. You know, uh, to the companies. Are you defi well defining what the current program is? And I'm. I'm expecting that the companies should be able to comply with that. In other words, I don't think it should be a major shift uh, for the Tarpon Springs employees. What they have now in terms of coverage, they'll have in the future. We're hoping to keep it the same. Yes. Okay. It's a good goal. Anybody else? Okay, that's all. We will adjourn this virtual meeting at 2.50 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.